Mike Pacelli here. Thanks for tuning in to this lesson. I'll be talking about the Beatles recording of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band that they did in February and March of 1967. Now, during the Beatles' final U.S. tour in 66, Paul really liked the way West Coast bands were titled. Uh, groups like Jefferson Airplane, uh, Quicksilver Messenger Service, and uh, Big Brother and the Holding Company. So when uh, Paul and uh, Mal Evans were coming back from vacation in November of uh, 1966, they're on the plane, and they were given those little salt and pepper packets. And, you know, they started playing around with words, and salt and pepper ended up being Sgt. Peppers, and uh, Paul added Lonely Hearts Club Band. Uh, the idea was to, uh, to have a fictitious band leader uh, teach his band to play uh, so, the, so they could sort of get away from the idea of the Beatles being a touring band and uh, become an alter ego band. Uh, earlier, Paul had been in Paris and he was wearing a disguise and that worked out great. So he thought, you know, Sgt. Pepper would kind of disguise the Beatles. Um, Mal Evans lived with Paul for about four months when Paul was in between housekeepers, and uh, he and uh, Neil Aspinall actually contributed a few bits to the lyrics. So now they're in the studio on February 1st, and they're going to start off with the usual lineup, but then Paul tells John that he wants to play rhythm guitar because he knows exactly what he wants. So John goes on bass. The engineers knew to record uh, John's bass direct. They used a direct box, so he wasn't using any amplifiers, so there wouldn't be no leakage on other tracks, because they figured Paul would want to overdub his bass later, which in fact they were right. They do nine takes. Uh, take nine is the keeper, and at the end, they just do 12 bars of uh, just kind of jamming on C. Uh, and George plays some, some tasty little, little fills on the end, and that's how Sgt. Pepper actually ended. Okay, February um, 2nd, they're back in the studio. Paul does his amazing lead vocal track. And uh, John, uh, George, and uh, Paul do those background vocals. And there's also um, Ringo, uh, Mal Evans, and Neil doing a little bit of singing on the chorus. And if you listen good to the chorus, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's pretty out of tune. Okay, so let's see, March 3rd. Uh, that's when they did the brass band overdub, that uh, four French horn thing. Um, the leader of the, of the French horn quartet was John Burden. Uh, Paul hums what he wants the French horns to play, and uh, John Burden uh, notates it, and that's what they ended up recording. Uh, that day, George Harrison spends hours trying to do the lead guitar work. Uh, to, he couldn't get it, so once again, Paul steps in and, and plays some amazing lead guitar. Now on March 6th, uh, they overdubbed the orchestra uh, that appears at the beginning of Sgt. Pepper's. And that was from when the orchestra was tuning up when they did the Day in the Life session. Uh, they also went into the EMI tape library and added some, some sound effects, the laughter and the applause uh, that you hear. And uh, the screaming at the end of the song when they, when they did the, uh, the next song comes from the Hollywood Bowl uh, uh, concert, live Hollywood Bowl. Now, although it was a concept album, uh, John Lennon has famously said that it doesn't go anywhere, and all of his songs you know, have absolutely nothing to do with the idea of Sgt. Pepper's and could have been on, on any other record, and which seems to be the case. Nevertheless, it was released uh, in June uh, 1967 on Capitol in the U.S. and Parlophone in Britain. Uh, it's believed to be the first pop album with lyrics printed on the cover, and it's uh, the first rock album to win a Grammy for Album of the Year. And fun facts to know and tell, the drumhead on the album cover sold for over a million dollars. So I think that's the backstory. Let's get started. Paul McCartney is playing his trusty Epiphone Casino on Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. And uh, the Beatles had a lot of amps at their disposal during the Sgt. Pepper recording uh, sessions. They had the uh, Vox 730 and the uh, 7120. They also had a uh, Fender Dual Showman and a Basement Head. I'm finding it uh, easy to get the sound uh, by using my 1967 uh, Fender... Uh, Deluxe Reverb, and I'm using a Gladio pedal, which is a handmade overdrive pedal in, uh, in made in Italy. So, um, although it's Paul playing it, it really is a Lennon type part because it's it's very dirty chords and the kind of kind of voicings that, that John used to like to use. Uh, what I mean by that is basically uh, it's three note chords, um, and there's only like five chords that you need to play the song. So when he plays a G7, it's just on the low three strings like this. <laughs> Right, and an A7. When he plays a C7 up here, it's, but he uses his thumb to get the low G. 
You hear the dirty nastiness of that. Uh, you'll need a D7 here. And uh, one other, the only time he variates from that D7 voicing is, is one time and it's like this. And, and he does go up to F7 up here like this. And he also goes up to the C7 up here sometimes. But again, 80% of the time when he plays the C7, it's with his thumb also getting the, uh, the low G. Okay, now the part is kind of a, a bouncing rhythm part with the accents on the downbeat. And there's slight muting going on. There's a lot of, there's some muting going on with the palm of your hand and also by lifting up the strings, especially when there's a 16th note phrase. Uh, so it's a, it's a little harder than, than it seems, uh, but you'll get it with some practice. So when the song starts out, even though it's in the key of G, uh, the song starts out on a on a uh, A7 chord, this chord, and it's straight eight notes when he first starts with with hard accents on the downbeats. So it's just um, you know straight eights like um, he slides on 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 beat four to the C7, grabbing your thumb, uh, and there's a little sixteenth measures in there. It's like. Right? That's the very beginning. Then the, the first verse, so the G7, just uh, eighth notes and some sixteenths. And again, when I'm playing the sixteenth notes, I'm going to lift up a little bit so they're not, you know, rung out. It, the rhythm, I'll do it slow. It's like, um, let's see. Got that? So up to speed would be... Um, close to the, let's see. Alright, now when he gets to the A7, uh, beat 2 is really short, it's like... Charts and tabs will be at uh, MikeBuscelli.com if you want to get every single measure exactly like Paul. Now when the French horns come in, that little part, you know, that part, uh, he, he plays pretty much straight eighth notes and, and, and pretty, not quite staccato, but close to staccato. So just eighth notes and this is when he goes up to the F7 here. So he plays C down here. Uh, And here's the, uh, the variation of the D7. He plays this D7. All right. Then on the first chorus, just uh, eighth notes, and he's going to go up to this C7 instead of this C7. So it's... Um, <clears throat> nice little play on the, on the C7 to the G7. On that C7, it's... Just really, you know, playful and strong. And then he, he, he finishes that, uh, that chorus with... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just straight eighths. The French horns do. Back down to the C7. Now, a little, little driving your rhythm on this part of the C7. It's like... Now on that kick, when he goes up to C to the to the uh, G7, the bass goes, you know, hearts club, but they stay, they stay on C C7. It's almost implying like a C9. So it's great. Um, okay, then uh, the last part of that is uh, as, a, as another kind of rhythm, just really driving on the C7, like. Um, and just one and a two and a three and a four and a, up to the F one and a two and a three and a four and a so we go and then straight eighth notes then on the last verse um, variates a little bit it's, it's a And 
again, when you get whenever you're playing those sixteenth notes, kind of lift up and let the let the rhythm bounce. Very playful. So if I do that really slow, it's like this. Almost like, you know, ghosting those notes. And then the most playful bit is at the very end where he gets to the A7, which is straight, a, a straight eighth notes, like a... And on the C, it's, it's a... Um, um, right? It's the only time he uses that figure. And another little playful... And then straight eighths. And then on the ending, Paul is just playing uh, uh, eighth notes for 12 measures. And that's how they ended it. Charts and tabs at MikeBicelli.com, which will uh, make it even clearer for you. But uh, now you got a good idea what Paul played on Sgt. Pepper's. If you do any research on who played what guitar on Sgt. Pepper's, it'll say George Harrison played either his Epiphone Casino or a Fender Stratocaster. It sounds more like uh, his SG, so that's what I'm using plugged straight into my Vox AC30. Now, George is doing his best to stay out of the way of Paul McCartney's uh, driving rhythm and just add, so he arpeggiates within the, uh, the chords. Uh, and he makes a few mistakes we'll talk about in a second. But like on the A7, he plays a figure like this. Um, turns it into a A7 raise 9. Then on the C7, he goes and plays this lick. All right? And when the verse starts, he's again arpeggiating around, you know, three note chords like his G7 like this. And he, and he plays a line like um for the A7 just back to the C7 um Now, on the third measure of the G7, he plays a, an unusual line. He plays, um, uh, let's see, to the C7, back to the G7, A7, C7, G7, C7, G7. So that whole intro would sound like this. Um, three, four. Mm. Two, three. Mm. kind of little playful way he goes through the whole song. Now on the French horn bridge, um, you know, his chords are going C to F. He plays a low C to a G. And it's like... Uh... Now, the next chord is F, but he plays what I think are two wrong notes. He slides up to a D and plays an open B over the F chord. Then back to C. Then very soft and muted uh, D fifths, like, and a really hard hit uh, fifth, I'm sorry, seventh fret of the G to the B string. Okay, now in the chorus, it's going to G to B flat to C. He plays, you know, little typical George Harrison bends. So on the G, he, he bends, um, it's the fifth fret of the third string. When they go up to the B flat, he bends the fifth fret of the B string. Then go to the C, he puts the uh, fifth fret of the G string and the B string, and then back to one to the G. Lightly plays on the C7. One, two. Second part of it, um, he's gonna bend the uh, sixth fret of the B string, so back to his little uh, fifth fret of the third string. And then a line like, like this. And then on the A7, mm, he touches that 
that uh, sharp nine again, and to to a D, and you hear a on four might have been a clunk. So that chorus, see if I can do it. Let's see how it goes. Sorry, D. <laughs> Again, charts and tabs at mikepacelli.com if you want to get it exactly like George. Now we're going back to a C7 and just arpeggiates on, this, on a regular C7, something like um, G7. On the A7, he starts on the and of one. It's one, uh, see, it's one. Now, when they go hearts, club, band, you know, the, the chords are C7 to G7. But he just plays all Gs. He just goes. Okay. So on the basically what is the second bridge, he's just going to lightly strum on a C7. It's going to F. Now he plays a bit of an unusual line on this F. He plays um, a line like this. That's what he does over the F and C7. And then up to a uh, you know, little three note D7. And then one, two. And that's a little, nice little, you know, accent where it's a, a high C on the uh, fret, uh, what is it, eight of the E string to fret seven of the G string and seven and eight of the G and the B string. So really hard accents. And then uh, he just stays within the chords and, and plays the top notes of the voicing from G7, like so. A7. When he hits the C7, he, his accent note is B flat. And then G7. Back to the same thing again. A7. C7. G7. Now on this A7, uh, I think George thought it was a C7 because they're playing A7 and, and he plays, um, he starts on the end of two, it's one, two. That's what he plays over the A7. But then he catches up on the C7 and he plays. And then uh, G7. And then he plays like a C9. It's the, the D for C9. And then in the last lick he plays is. Um, like that. Gets the open B and then the G7. You get charts and tabs at MikeBocelli.com. You can get exactly uh, it like, get it exactly like George if you desire. And then when they do that uh, 12 bar fade out thing, the originally way they recorded Sgt. Pepper, uh, George plays some nice suspended uh, lines. So uh, I think he starts on measure two and he plays. Right, and then he waits uh, a measure or two, and he gets a little C to F. And he repeats that. Again, you know. Just very sweet. And that's how they originally uh, faded out uh, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Okay, well, now you know how George uh, played all his rhythm parts. Paul McCartney did some great lead guitar work uh, on his Fender Esquire for Sgt. Pepper's. Uh, Esquire is basically a uh, Telecaster with one pickup, so I'm using my Tele through the bridge pickup. It's plugged into a fuzz face going into my Vox AC30. Okay, the uh, intro licks are pretty much pentatonic stuff. Um, you start on the uh, ninth fret of the G string to the eighth fret of the B string to the tenth fret of the B string and play this. And what you want to get is a really fast trill vibrato uh, on the uh, on the uh, tenth fret of the B string. Really attack it, slide down, do that twice. Continue that same idea to uh, uh, what is it, eight and ten of the E string, and then slide down from uh, eight to six on the B string, back up to eight on the B string, and hit a seventh fret on the G string. So the whole beginning sounds like Duh. 
Now I forgot to mention you need to tune your low E down to a D. Uh, so a whole step, so it sounds like this. Because uh, right there, like on beat four, he goes, he plays uh, the three low strings. All right, so you got... Okay. And then he's basically just hitting stabs on, on beat two. Uh, with the top part of a like uh, you know a triad of a chord like a G triad so the third the fifth and the root of G to A to C to G again A C and then just um, you know some double stops a D and a G like this Right? So the verse sounds like this. One. <clears throat> and that's that. Then there's the five measures of rest for the uh, French horn break. And when he comes in uh, 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 next, it's like power chords but just just like uh, the the fifth fret of the low strings to get like the G chord because now you're tuned down you know it's basically a G and a D note all right so you play like the G to B flat C and now on this on this G he slides into it and he goes again So uh, in tempo, do it tempo for you. Two, three, four. <laughs> Charts and tabs at mikebuscelli.com if, you, if uh, I didn't make it clear enough there. Then there's he's out for nine measures. And he comes at, back at the very end, and again, just you know, kind of playing around with uh, uh, first position chords, we'll say second position chords actually, playing the the third and the root of the note. So of on G, oh, he actually does the fifth when he first starts. He starts and he goes like, and for A, that's the third of A and and top of A, um, third of uh, C and root of C slides into the G thing again. So see these figures like this, just with then. So again, it sounds like this, very slow. Back up to the A. Now when he gets up here, he's on the C, which is uh, fret, uh, what is it, fret, <laughs> I always forget these, 8 of the E string to 10, slides down to 3, hammers 1 and 3, and then he plays a little quick lick out, and the lick is, slowly the lick is, alright, like that. So that whole part sounds like this. Three, four. Again, charts and tabs at MikePicelli.com. You can get it exactly like Paul, and now you know what he played. Well, I put it all together in a sound like so you could see how all the parts fit together. So let's check this out.
I certainly hope you enjoyed that. And all you have to do is play along with my sounds like a few times and you'll get it just like the Beatles. If you'd like to drop me a line, do so at MikePacelli.com. And that's where the charts and tabs for all my video lessons are available for you to download. And if you would be so kind, please subscribe to this channel. So until next time, I'm Mike Pacelli. Thanks for hanging out with me.